Welcome back to Unleashed on TNT. I'm your host, Mark Morano. All right, we're continuing our conversation with Scott Shepard, the director of the Free Enterprise Free Enterprise Project at the National Center for Public Policy. We're talking about wokeism. Uh, you were talking about you know sort of reining in and making it so people could sue big tech. How big a part is big tech in enforcing wokeism? And what are these? I mean, I when I I can't remember when I first. I guess I first heard of a fact check probably. I remember uh, like Dick Cheney giving out information. They were originally not a bad idea. They were these Snopes and all that, but things have evolved a long way since the original Snopes, which I found actually quite useful, even if you had a liberal bias. But give us some of the the you know the the origin of how big tech came to play such a huge role in wokeism, enforcing wokeism. Well, I, I think it's it is the primary motivator um, for for stamping out basic thought. Other than uh, other than maybe the elementary school, starting with the indoctrination, but we've seen just this week. I mean, <laughs> the laughability of the Google AI that that will not make white founding fathers, right, or will not perpetuate <laughs> yes. white people in anything but an evil way. But we also found out that Google, uh, if you type in a search topic that has any ideological bent, they will behind the scenes revise that search topic that you put in. To make it more leftist, which is why when you you search for you know you search for stories about what we're doing fighting ESG, what you get is ninety stories first uh, that support ESG, and so I mean that's fraud on consumers. There's there's everything in the world wrong with that, uh, and it, it's emblematic of what uh, what happened has happened throughout tech. I think what happened there. You remember that initially tech was a, a, a fairly libertarian, the idea that the Internet and the new technolo technological op opportunities were going to be uh, libertarian in their effects. But the thing is, most of these kids who started big corporations, that, that's the only thing they'd ever done. Right. And so they get out there, they become billionaires. They feel guilty about that. They don't have any earthly idea, having come from Harvard to billionaire, but they don't have any idea how the world works. Right. And so they'll listen to any nonsense that, that comes their way. And because they're in Northern California, the nonsense that came their way was uh, the, the stuff flowing down from San Francisco. So now we've got a whole movement of San Francisco lunacy writ large because of happenstances of geography and because uh, uh, one hit wonder kids got too rich too fast. Uh, so so I, think, I think that is a central role. Um, uh, but again, I think there, there are a, a massive number of things they're doing that either are or could be illegal. And with Google's misbehavior, you remember uh, when we were kids, um, there was one telephone company nationwide, Ma Bell, right? Yes. And in the early 80s, it got broken up. Um, and then there was competition and phone service got better, et cetera, et cetera. But in order for it to need breaking up, it had been smushed together uh, into a common carrier uh, by, by government pressure in large part 60 years before that. And so I think it's, it's time to give a lot of these tech companies, and Google in particular, a choice. Either uh, they, they agree to being broken up, or they're regulated as a public utility and can't discriminate against anybody in any way at all, the way the, way the old telephone company. Isn't that hard at this point? Does, doesn't the big tech lobby politicians, lobby, give money to think tanks? Even a lot of conservative libertarian ones, I guess, receive that and the, and... How hard is it to take on big tech? Is that realistic in any you know shorter time frame? It just seems as though they have the system wrapped up. Well, I mean, I think I think that's probably what um, uh, people who fought against the railroad trusts and the oil trusts right. in the eighteen eighties and nineties thought too. I think I think we can beat tech, but but conservatives, conservative politicians all across our side, we have to put on our our, our war bonnets and use all the tools at our disposal. What, what, what's hamstrung us for so long is so many uh, conservative politicians or, or activists, oh, well, we don't want to touch antitrust, or, well, we should, we should really just leave this alone. When th the other side fights with every weapon it has, we've got to engage the same way. Yeah, in the climate world, it was October of 2022 when the UN uh, Climate Communications Director was doing an interview and she said, quote, we own the science of climate change. So we partnered with Google 
in order to make sure all the returns on Google and search engines reflected the fact that the UN owned the science. That's what she said. Literally, I was almost verbatim the quote I gave you. So just how how many uh, you know bowls? How many? That's a big bowl of wrong. But how break that down for me? When you have a a non government body, an international organization like the United Nations, partnering with Google to then literally make sure you already alluded to this. You know, the first ninety returns will be something. But you know, how 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 do you how do you fight that? Is that that same thing? Just you have to break apart. So you're basically saying break apart Google in order to prevent that. Well, I think break apart quite a lot of them, but this is another place where, uh, as an initial matter, antitrust uh, could play a big role or related uh, related statutes and tools, because it turns out you look at the, the tech industry, everybody has agreed to those things, right? So it is a competent, it is a combination in restraint of trade. Look what they did to Parler. Look what they did. They tried to do yeah. to Musk. And the only reason they didn't do it is because he's the richest man in the world. And yeah. so when that kind of collusive behavior occurs in industry. There are tools. And in the 60s, people were sent, uh, 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 energy executives were sent to jail for colluding less than the climate lobby uh, and its avatars collude um, now uh, to to this transition to, to higher uh, uh, price and lower quality energy. So again, we could be talking about jail sentence. Wow. I mean, I, I hope that's correct. You also have Al Gore. This was announced at the UN Summit, partnering up with Google, Google again, to launch satellites. Now, Al Gore has all these investors and different climate companies, and he's partnering with Google, which apparently has these satellites anyway. And they're going to be monitoring farms, businesses, corporations, and for making sure that they disclose their CO2 emissions. I call it Big Al is watching you. But yeah, this is we you know, we're just it's an incredible collusion. I think it was Vivek Ramaswamy who so eloquently said, "We you know, back when Reagan was running in 1980, we were all worried about fighting against big government. Well, while we fought against, tried to fight against big government, the corporate government fascism came in the back door, and that's really what we're dealing with now is all this. So, and you're right, I guess breaking it up would be the key thing. But here's what I want to ask you about: is the pressure? It's uh, it's intense. If someone, you know, here in Virginia, I guess our attorney general uh, misidentified a transgender activist as him. And even though they were trying to say that it was, she's trying to, he's trying to claim he's a she. And there's immediate, you know, cancel culture, outrage. People lose their jobs over this kind of stuff. Critical race theory. You say the wrong thing. People lose their jobs over this immediately. You become unperson, canceled. You say the wrong thing about COVID. You say the wrong thing about a vaccine. That you can't just pass a law. That's a psychology. That's an ideology. And it's just rampant. And people are terrified into silence, which allows us to continue. Where does that come from? How do they get that zeal to just silence people and enforce what we can say and what we can't say? Well, that's an interesting progression, isn't it? Because <laughs> you think about it a decade ago, uh, as, as as recently as a decade ago, say the, the uh, gay rights uh, movement was talking about tolerance for everyone and equality. Yeah. Right? They wanted protections against discrimination for being gay. The minute they got gay marriage, HRC and the other professional gay institutions, the minute they got it, they started to try to discriminate against the non-gays or discriminate in favor of the LGBT ever-growing community, right? And so the same thing has happened with the uh, 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 with, with the other parts of the left. In the 50s, it was the left against McCarthyism and against uh, firing people because of their political positions or statements, et cetera. As soon as they got in charge, they, they revived all of, the, all of the evils of before. Apple ran a, uh, a commercial in, uh, in 1982 in the Super Bowl about being the antidote to 1984. By now, they are 1984. And yeah. so... It's just a matter. The left always wants power because the, the the base of the left is the desire of adults to control other adults' lives. And if you ask me, that's the best definition of fascism. That you know, off the off the top of, top of a off the top of the cuff. And so that's happened. Uh, uh, it's just in their nature. It's in the the nature of the left, like the scorpion. And uh, as a result, this is another area where I think that we have to respond in kind. For instance, red states 
could, uh, in going after uh, uh, universities, say no uh, continuing contract can be issued to any professor who has advocated the, the cancellation or the indoctrination or opposed free speech on that campus, right? And then fire a ton of them and then ban DEI and require them to have one-to-one -one balance of liberal and conservative in their faculties. They could never hire another liberal uh, because of the, the imbalance there. So pretty much systemically and systematically, we could respond to them the way they treat us. And then I think they'd have to come to the uh, to the to the uh, the peace negotiation table because it would turn out that they didn't much like it happening to them. Can you expand on how wokeism is used by corporations, businesses to cover up bad behavior? In other words, if you're a big polluting industry, if you're a big uh, exploitation industry, whether it's exploiting you know children in other countries or or bad environmental standards, bad human rights record. As long as you wrap yourself in the mantle of wokeism and you know gay rights and transgender and critical race, suddenly you're like virtuous. And this is exactly what Apple's done. I mean, they have contracts with China. They're they have you know, dirt ball wages. They make the most wasteful products that they try to get you to replace every year with all the rare earth. At the same time, they're a progressive and they're seen. It's funny because 50 years ago, the left railed against big business. Today, big business, they own big business, the left. So um, yeah. I guess the question really, really to simplify it is, is wokeism just a cover for bad business practices so they can wrap themselves in that flag and be liked? It's not, it's not just a cover for that. It is definitely right. in part a cover for that. It's okay. also in part the deal that corporate executives struck with, uh, with the left after, uh, after the Ether Rich Zuccotti Park uh, uh, Occupy Wall Street episode. They, they said to the left, listen, we know you want to tax us into sin. We quite like being billionaires. How about you, you let us continue to be billionaires and in exchange, we'll support all of your policies with our corporate assets. And so th there's a lot of that. It's, it's protection money to the left, to the anti-corporate left, because yeah. they thought the right would never turn anti-corporate. And it took us a long time. But, but there are some true believers. But what you say about coverage is, is entirely true. Consider Ford. Ford invested an immense amount of money into EVs. It was a terrible idea. Now they're paying the price. But along the way to that, they needed cobalt. Cobalt is mostly supplied from uh, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And uh, the people who know have certified with significant research that there's no way to get cobalt from the Congo uh, without using forced and slave and child labor. Well, Ford you know, doesn't care because it's green, it's clean. And so they set up this system whereby at two removes, they're judging their own reports about the, the non-use of child and slave labor in the Congo. And they refuse to say where they're getting uh, the cobalt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, they, uh, they use the fact that, well, this is a green industry or a green production to do all of the things that they oppose here at home and that they wouldn't be able to do without, without the cover. Wow. Well, thank you very much. Scott Shepard, the director of the Free Enterprise Project uh, at the uh, National Center for Public Policy, fighting wokeism. Keep up the fight. Thank you for joining the program today. This is Unleashed with Mark Morano on TNT. We'll see you next time.